For this month's video, we're going to be discussing a new procedure in the emergency department. This one's brand new, described in 2023. It's for acute sciatica or lumbar radiculopathy. If you've ever worked in the emergency department, I'm sure you've seen plenty of sciatica. You give patients NSAIDs, acetaminophen, steroids, maybe even some muscle relaxants or lidocaine patches, which probably won't work. Um, you tell the patient, hey, this will probably get better without any type of intervention, but it could take a few weeks to months. Patients are often unhappy. The providers are unhappy. So is there something we could be doing differently? And yes, there is this new procedure. So first off, I'm going to tell you I don't do it on every patient. That would cripple my emergency department flow. But there are some patients you can do it in. And usually the patients that are say, Doc, I don't care if you cut my leg off. I've tried everything. This has been going on for a few days or weeks. The pain is excruciating. Please help me. Well, this procedure is called the transgluteal sciatic nerve hydrodissection, and it was described in 2023 by Dr. Silver with a case series of four patients. And so what they will do is instead of doing a nerve block of the sciatic nerve using local anesthetic, they actually use dextrose. Now, let me describe why dextrose may work. It can be dangerous to discuss pathophysiology to another emergency medicine doctor, but I'm going to give it a shot. So nerve compression from fascia and ligaments is thought to cause very difficult to control neuropathic pain. And there's already a procedure that people use to help with this pain called prolotherapy. The idea is that you inject dextrose around the nerve to reduce pain and inflammation. And that's thought to work because compressed nerves have a buildup of toxins due to the outflow obstruction and decompression of the nerves will help the venous outflow. Also, dextrose is thought to help due to perineuroglycopenia and increasing nerve mobility. Since this is such a strange idea for an emergency medicine doctor, I thought it would be worthwhile to take a moment to describe where this came from. Well, they've done studies on carpal tunnel syndrome, which is the most common and well-described nerve compression syndrome, and they've randomized patients with either a dextrose injection or a normal saline injection using ultrasound guidance around the median nerve. And guess what? the dextrose arm won. They had significant reductions in pain and disability, improvements on electrophysiologic responses as well. And in another study, dextrose and triamcinolone were randomized against each other. And again, dextrose had decreased pain and disability in the sixth month. So clearly dextrose must be doing something. Well, why dextrose? We know local anesthetics work for nerve blocks. Why should we use dextrose? Well, in the emergency department perspective, the great thing is that there's no motor weakness that comes from dextrose, and there's no risk of last or local anesthetic systemic toxicity. So therefore, you don't need an IV or cardiac monitors or post-block monitoring. Going back to the article, what happened? Well, they described this in four patients with sciatica that did not have any red flags or weakness or any other concerning features, just your run-of-the-mill sciatica or lumbar radiculopathy. Look at the results here. Patient one had 10 out of 10 pain prior to the procedure and one out of 10 pain after 10 minutes. The pain relief lasted over 48 hours as well. The second patient had nine out of 10 pain that went to three out of 10 pain in 10 minutes, it lasted over 24 hours. The third patient had eight out of 10 pain down to two out of 10 pain within 10 minutes, lasted 72 hours. And then finally, a patient with nine out of 10 pain that went to quote, no significant pain and lasted greater than 24 hours. This is spectacular. Let's describe how to actually perform the procedure, starting with patient positioning. You'll put the patient in the lateral decubitus position with the symptomatic side up, meaning this patient seen here would have a right-sided sciatica. Their hip and knee would be slightly flexed and you palpate the greater trochanter and ischial tuberosity landmarks. This will serve as the medial and lateral border of the sciatic nerve seen here in yellow. Now you'll grab the curvilinear transducer and place it along the dashed line connecting the ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter near the gluteal fold. Once you place the ultrasound transducer on the patient, here's what you'll see anatomically. Starting with the gluteus maximus muscle here is the most noticeable muscle. Underneath will be the quadratus femoris muscle, and the lateral borders will be the greater trochanter seen here, and ischial tuberosity will be the medial border, and the sciatic nerve will be found right in the middle. It should be triangular and hyperechoic. Here's an image taken from the article showing the gluteus maximus muscle, the quadratus femoris, the ischial tuberosity, and the greater trochanter, as well as the sciatic nerve here, lying in this fascial plane. 
Here's an ultrasound image with a nice graphic to the side that demonstrates the fascial plane that the sciatic nerve is lying in right here. This was drawn by Arun Nagdev. As for the actual procedure, I still perform a skin wheel with lidocaine. I use a 22 gauge 100 millimeter nerve block needle with an in-plane technique, either medial to lateral or lateral to medial, whichever looks easier on the patient. I'll introduce the needle to this fascial plane here and inject 20 to 40 cc's of D5W into this fascial plane. This is very important that this is different than a normal nerve block. This fluid must actually move circumferentially around the nerve in order to decompress the nerve. We're taught with normal nerve blocks, it's fine to leave it on one side and eventually the local anesthetic will diffuse through. And that's true if you're using local anesthetic. But again, this is something a little bit different and we're gonna improve the mobility of the sciatic nerve so it must be circumferential spread. They prefer using 20 cc's of D5W. I find that 40 cc's gives me better spread around the sciatic nerve, so I use 40 cc's. Here's an actual injection I did on a patient in the emergency department recently. You'll notice that the needle is coming in here and that the sciatic nerve is this triangular hyperechoic structure that exhibits anisotropy. I've advanced my needle somewhat further and you'll notice that there's dextrose spreading right here and the sciatic nerve is right here. So I'm not there yet. So this is the most important clip. Here's the sciatic nerve and you'll notice the dextrose is not quite around the sciatic nerve here. So I'm introducing my needle a little bit farther and injecting again. Notice I'm still not getting a fascial spread of the, of the dextrose, which I expect the, if I'm in a fascia, the anechoic fluid should unzipper the fascial planes, which you see here. As I slide my transducer, I'm going to better define where my needle tip is. And I'm going to inject more dextrose into this location. And you'll notice that the fascial plane is continuing to open up. The sciatic nerve is somewhat a little hard to see at a, every once in a while, but it's right here as my probe is moving back and forth. It's slightly moving off to the side as well on the screen. I'm advancing my needle slightly more, and here again is the sciatic nerve. For this clip, I moved my transducer, and now the sciatic nerve is found here. I've actually moved my needle to the other side of the sciatic nerve because I want circumferential spread. So I'm trying to be as detailed as possible to get the dextrose on the opposite side of the sciatic nerve. Again, here is the sciatic nerve, and I'm injecting some more dextrose, and I'm moving my transducer to, so I can see a nice circumferential spread of the local anesthetic on the right side. And for my final video, I'm trying to demonstrate the sciatic nerve here with anechoic dextrose around the entire sciatic nerve Here's the gluteus maximus muscle as well, and the sciatic nerve has circumferential dextrous. So after that injection, the patient went from 10 out of 10 pain to near complete resolution of pain. I've called the patient a few days later and he was still doing well. So this is in line with these study limitations that only followed patients up two to three days after the injection. So it's unclear how long this, this dextrous injection lasts for. And the study enrolled non-obese patients. And in my patient population, obesity is quite a problem. But after doing the procedure about eight times, I have my own thoughts. First, using a curvilinear probe for an injection can be a little bit difficult. And it's also harder to visualize the needle because you're taking a steeper approach to a nerve block and the nerve block is deeper than usual. I also had some wrist fatigue the first couple times I did it since I was trying to get my views optimized and I was holding the probe very firmly against the patient's buttocks. And it's definitely more time consuming than not doing the block in the fast track. So make sure you only do this in the appropriate patients. However, with all those caveats out of the way, I've had excellent results with this over the eight injections. So could this be the future of sciatic care in the emergency department? Maybe. Could this be relegated to anesthesia pain? Possibly. I'm not really sure where this fits in, but I'd love to know your comments, whether you've had good experiences with it in your emergency department. So drop some comments below. And if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and check out my other videos. Thanks.